This video is done in collaboration with Henry the Paleo Guy, ATR1X underscore, Curious Archive, Spino Dude Reviews, and Some Raptor. Check out their channels via links in the description and comment section below. Low poly models in this video were made by Adam Midzuk or Kuzim. They were animated by Cameron, Camzilla94, and by Nyx. Sauropods, or long necks, were the largest things to ever walk the face of the earth. Nothing else has come close. Whether that's because something evolves to curb them before they reach the same size as the long neck dinosaurs, or that the sauropods were just built different, the fact remains that nothing existed before or after them that could compete. The only critters to beat out the land titans are the oceanic leviathans, but that's water, they're cheating. Each new sauropod dinosaur discovered helps to understand the group as a whole, as every single one is fragmentary, with very few considered relatively complete. One of these well-preserved behemoths was yet another South American beast from the late Cretaceous. Come and join me in learning about one of the most complete of the titanosaurs, Dreadnoughtus, the living citadel. The Silver Screen Screams When the Dreadnoughtus paper was first published, there was a huge media push for the beast. The only reason I can think of is that it was one of the most complete of its kind. Any new sauropod known from fossils more substantive than five vertebrae is worthy of celebration. The hype is what led it to becoming embroiled in the back and forth over its size in the year or so that followed its publication. After this, the hype quickly died. Its name, however, would live on, as it is too edgy and badass for some to resist. Dreadnoughtus would next show up in the Jurassic Park franchise. It first appears in the short film called The Prologue, for the sixth, final, and ultimately disappointing Jurassic World Dominion. Said prologue never actually made the cut for the final theatrical run of the film, and was instead used to promote it a year or so before its release. The Dreadnoughtus would then appear again in the full film a few times. The Dreadnoughtus in the newest Jurassic schlock is not at all that bad, actually. It is still a bit cartoonized in some parts of its anatomy, namely its musculature and head. The head is a weird shape for these type of titanosaurs. Obviously, no skull was found with the remains, but the head shape of the movie monster really doesn't match most sauropods that do have a more complete skull and are also somewhat closely related to the Dread. Both times the animal shows up in Jurassic World Dominion, its details are obscured. You can see them much better in the 3D model made by Ludia for their many Jurassic World mobile games, and in the toy by Mattel. But obviously these are going to be taking a lot more liberties, so I won't count it. Suffice it to say, all of them are far worse off than the design shown in the film. Hey, Kenneth Lackelbauer here. I have a new toy. Literally, a new toy. I'm a grown man. And I have toys. This was sent to me by the nice people at NBC Universal Studios. And it happens to contain a model of a dinosaur that I discovered called Dreadnoughtus. must say though that it is extremely annoying to see a sauropod put in a swamp again. I do recognize that sauropods could and would submerge themselves in water like every other animal on the planet, but it's just a weird trope that seems to happen only in these movies. The musculature is really weird for the dino. The arms are extremely hyper-muscled. 
or at least the skin is so thin in those areas that you see almost every fiber of those muscles bulging like a roided out dude at the gym. I won't make much of a comment on how realistic this is as that varies between animal groups and the conditions imposed on individuals. Modern herbivores tend to be squishier and less hypermuscular than carnivores, but there are many exceptions here. At least it has better colors and patterns than the hideous Apatosaurus of Jurassic World or the classic brachio Titan of Jurassic Park. The animal also appeared before the film in the Jurassic World Evolution and Evolution 2. Here the proportions and angle of the body are much more in line with what is known of titanosaurs, but its front feet are disturbingly elephantine or rhinocerine in appearance, with individual hoofed nails. It also has the most capybara looking face I have ever seen applied to a sauropod, which is definitely worse than the weird muppety looking thing in the films. Finally, the critter appears in the critically acclaimed prehistoric planet in Episode 2, Deserts. In this episode, the animal is represented as a lecking and or harem species. A herd of dreadnoughtus migrate to a salt flat. The females congregate in groups to watch males display to one another and to them. The dreadnoughtus here are decked out in lots of muscle and fat. They are healthy animals. The weirdest and coolest thing here is the mating display, which consists of inflatable sacks along the neck, as well as a brutish wrestling match. Bronto Smash A lot of the soft tissues in this show are influenced by the fossil record as well as inferences from modern animals, but there is of course some speculation thrown in as well. A lot more speculation is used when it comes to reconstructing behaviors, but none of these behaviors are purely made up. All of them are seen in many different groups of modern animals. These behaviors are seen across many different groups that vary in metabolisms, intelligence, and evolution. So showing them here in some extinct forms of animals is not implausible, nor impossible. The lecking thing is unknown in just about any extinct animal. It is behavior, how could it fossilize? The makers wanted to show how lecking might work in sauropods, and since the sauropod dinosaurs lasted from the late Triassic to the very end of the Cretaceous period, I don't see why it would be implausible that at least one species developed such a behavior. Their inflatable neck balls are another itty bit of speculation. The sauropod dinosaurs had a labyrinthine system of air sacs throughout their bodies. They were attached to the lungs and invaded the spinal column all the way to the tip of the tail and base of the skull. Here, the researchers on board the series have implied that perhaps these air sacs connected to gular sacs of the throat in a similar fashion to the living greater sage grouse and voila, inflatable air sacs. Some nitpickers have pointed out that it would be weird for the sacs to inflate first from the head down to the base of the neck as gular display structures in living species inflate upon exhalation. So they should inflate from the lungs up, not the head down. Eh. Some have also remarked upon the facial expressions of the beasts as they tussle, but I don't really see it as anything other than their mouths slightly opening and closing as they breathe. Dreadnoughtus is reconstructed with a thumb claw on the hand. The thing is that the hand bones are largely fragmentary in both dreadnoughtus specimens. They lack the parts of the hand where the thumb would be. In general, most titanosaurs lost their thumb claw and thumb. However, Diamantinosaurus, a titanosaur from Australia, was found with a thumb and thumb claw. A few other thumb claws are known or suspected from fragmentary or otherwise controversial late Jurassic and early Cretaceous forms. So the presence of it here in prehistoric planet Dreadnoughtus is entirely possible, but more on the speculative side. Could they rear? Yep. Only a little bit of research has been done on how likely it was for massive sauropods to rear up on their hind limbs. It was proposed all the way back in the early 1900s by racist eugenicist Henry Fairfield Osborne, stay mad chuds, where the sauropod would use its tail as a prop or third leg. The conjecture was even used as a basis for the Barasaurus skeletal mount at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. A 2005 paper hypothesized that you would find stress fractures in the forelimbs if sauropods were rearing up on their hind limbs, but none were found. 
A 2009 study by Heinrich Malison found that diplodocid sauropods, uropatosaurs, dicreosaurs, and diplodocids were the most adapted to rearing of all the sauropods, and even better adapted for it than elephants. They have their center of gravity right over their hips, had the most mobile necks, a well-muscled pelvis, and tail, and tail vertebrae shaped to bear the brunt of heavy loads. The same study found that titanosaurs were not so well adapted, and brachiosaurs were likely entirely incapable due to a wonky center of gravity. That seems to rule out Dreadnoughtus as a rearer, but we're not done. Dr. Darren Nash has pointed out that it should be possible, due to their wide hips, agility, strong leg muscles, and muscular tails. Considering the fighting males only rear for a very short time, I find it to be pretty plausible and possible. Plenty of animals alive today do things they aren't specifically adapted for, and sometimes stuff that even causes pain, and yet they still do it, live from it, and continue to do it without evolutionary consequences. I personally find it odd that the one that fell over and lost seemed to have just died. If they can rear, bite, and batter each other, I don't see why lightly flopping over in defeat would be enough to crush the ribcage and die. Hopefully, that satisfies your skepticism. That's about all that can be squeezed out of Dreadnoughtus, and I'm pooped. Hope you liked the video and hope you come back for Dreadnoughtus when I review the desert's episode of Prehistoric Planet. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman, 